waiting for the main hunting season and for when the animals go into rut. Try and get a moose nice and early. I'm gonna bring an extra boot with me so I can travel around in the back areas. This little boat's great for that. This new country for me to go into. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge for me to, to figure out where to go, how to hunt. For a lot of people, hunting is a real passion for them. They love to just get out and walk around in the woods and hunt, and they really get jazzed about it, and that's great. But when you live out here, hunting is an integral part of life, and without it, you really can't survive. You can't live as a vegetarian out here. Getting fish and getting meat is absolutely essential to just this lifestyle. Getting a moose doesn't come knocking on your door. You gotta go out and find it. This is a spot I, I want to camp out. We've got a nice island here, seeing a fair amount of shoreline where moose could easily come out. set up and then spend the rest of the day doing a little bit of uh, calling and I do want to get out and hike around a little bit just to kind of survey the area. At this point in time it's all going to be about luck and patience. Every bit of red meat I can get right now is insurance and it's a stress reliever for me because it allows me to know that I don't have to worry about that later in the season. It's all based on economics. Out here, the currency is wildlife and resources. The natural land and the resources that it has is my job and my employer. And that's what pays me to be able to live here. Something's beating down the grass here. I don't know if that's a moose or not, but it sure looks like the size of a moose. bear tracks right here. Almost looks like a grizzly track. See how you see the claws right here? Usually you only see that with a grizzly bear. Luckily, he's heading that way. My camp is this way. <laughs> I think that's a bear I really don't want to tangle with. At this point, it's all going to be about luck and patience. Probably patience being the more important of the two. instant reward, instant gratification. When you go hunting, you either get something or you don't. Okay, shall we open yep. it up? Overlap it. Yep. You gonna fish with us? Yeah. Carol, we're just gonna get a section of this net and then go set it. What are we gonna be fishing for? Salmon? Yeah, we're gonna be fishing for salmon. Yep, you got that right. In Norbert. The hailstones rely on the surrounding waterways to provide them with vital resources. This time of year, the family must turn their attention to harvesting salmon, a key food source that will help them survive the coming months. There's uh, people starting to catch quite a few salmon, so um, it's about time to put out some salmon nets. Um, we could be the first, but I'd rather have quantity and quality all together. There's been a lot of rain, so you get a lot of high water. These rains will sweep down to the ocean, and those fresh waters will induce the salmon to come in. So all the conditions are right now for salmon to be showing up. 
Yeah. But someday, Carol, you'll be able to handle one of these yourself. You know what I mean? Whoa. Right there. The thing is that we can get a mass amount of them, but only for a very short time. And salmon, to us, are seasonal because they only come in, you know, basically at one time of year, which is the summer. And when they're gone, they're gone. In about a week or so, there's a whole big change that goes on. The fact is, summer's half over. It's already starting to get dark. Pretty soon we'll see stars, maybe in the next week. So we're going to try and get ourselves a fair amount of them. We'll put some in the freezer hole and keep them. We'll dry some, we'll half dry some, and we'll make strips and smoke the rest. So nothing's wasted there. It's all good. Let's go set this net, huh? Yeah. It's a real beautiful day for fishing. Um, we're going a few bends away from town. You can see there's already a whole bunch of fish racks lined up along the beach. So we're just going to go a little bit farther away where um, we can actually have some space. This is where you want to go, right? Yeah. Do you want me to put it on the point or do you want it? Where do you want it? Should we go put it down here where there's high, high bank? Yeah, I think so, probably. Yeah. Let's go try that then. Grab that, put it right over here where the crack is. One, two, three. Okay. Let me hit. Uh, yeah, if you want to, go for it. You're strong. Just tap it. Oh, tap. We're going to use this pole to tie the net. And we'll just go straight out that way somewhere. Yep. Straight out. Your dad will drive and me and you will feed it out, Carol. And then we'll just leave it here for the night. And then we'll just pick this back up tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna fire this baby up. Okay, we're gonna try to go straight out. I'm sure the current is gonna take us. Carol, all you gotta do is just throw yours that way and try to get it on the side of it. Throw it, Carol, throw it far. Throw it, looking straight down. Yep, keep, just on. keep going, ladies, Good keep job, going. Carol. Awesome, just throw that right in, Carol, it's fine. Pull the tarp. That Get onto that rope and straighten this net as best you can. Okay. Go ahead, it's tight, Carol. Look, we got a fish already. Oh, look, Carol, there's a fish. Well, all right, right off the bat. There's two fish in the net now. Let's go get them and go home. Wow, look, that's a silver? That's a silver. Holy cow. Whoa. Uh, yeah, I think this is a good start to the season, all right? Down here on the bottom, there's one jerking. This is awesome. Oh, here's a big jump. Woo. This is fun. <laughs> this is fun. I haven't even had this net out for more than five minutes and we already got six fish. Let it go, Carol. It's going to keep fishing all night long. Let's go home. Watch your mood. We'll go eat some fish. Call it a day. Let this net do its thing and we'll go do ours. Yep. Yeah. looking out for you. You gotta look out for yourself out here. Out here it's up to you. Not a single fly egg on this meat. I left this little scrap of meat out here this afternoon just to see if there are any more flies at all around that lay eggs on me. I don't like to hunt before the flies go away. If there's still flies around that lay eggs on me, I might end up with maggots. But I can see that the flies are definitely gone. There's not one single fly egg on this meat. That's good. It's time to go moose hunting. My rifle, some extra ammunition, and I got a few clothes and small items in my backpack. And my antler, that's all I need to hunt a moose. Moose is the most important animal. If I get a moose, that equals food security right there. If I get one, that's hundreds of pounds of meat for me to get through the winter with. I won't have another chance at a moose until next fall, so it's very important that I find one. The way I hunt is to walk around the lake 
every day, four or five miles a day, walking through the woods, calling moose, listening for moose, looking for moose. There's no certainty. Sometimes it can take 10 days before I get a shot at a moose. It can be very difficult. Once winter sets in, it's really hard to find enough fat out here to survive. I won't have another chance at a moose until next fall, so it's very important that I find one. Here's a big moose track right here. A moose came through there. We tore up all that moss when it's off the plant there, right there. It's headed this way. I need to be careful where I start calling moose. Because if I call a moose into an area, then it's going to be hard to get the moose out of after I shoot it. That's real bad. ensure your own survival. What I want to do right now is head down the road. I'm going to go to a little place I call Bear Creek and Caribou Crossing. I want to build a blind or an area I can get behind and wait for the animals to cross. As the summer wanes in Kavik, now is the time for Sue Akins to stockpile meat to survive the months ahead. Today, She's heading out to hunt for caribou as they migrate through the region. This will be her final chance to harvest an animal before dark winter arrives and freezes the tundra. I have to pick an area that I know they go through. This is all just part of my new plan. Hunt more efficiently, hunt within your means. Hunting is such an integral part of my life and it's not the slaughtering of an animal. It's the satisfaction of providing for myself. I still need to eat. Caribou, to me, is the tastiest meat on the planet, but I still don't have enough to get me through the winter. The goal is I need to fill my freezer, or I have to find another way to get food. There's some bear poopy, and we're getting close to Bear Creek. Here's the first big old pile of bear poopy I've seen all year. I want to get out, just take a look, see how fresh it is. That's definitely today's, no doubt about that. And probably this morning. The animals tend not to make a lot of mistakes in where they go hunting and where they're looking for their food. So if he's here as well, that, that bodes well for the uh, migration. Bears are all about the ambush. This is a good location. Got my knife. Got my axe. Let's see. I do not want to disturb really anything this way that's going to help hide me. So I may have to go over there and get some of the tall pieces and weave them in. 
I'm taking live willow plants, I'm weaving other willow branches in, in an effort to mask being able to see me. That way I can be successful at having animals approach me closer. My blind is not here to guarantee me a hunt. My blind is to guarantee that I'm less visible. I think it's looking really good from all angles, but I'm making strips so that I can go measure out 50 yards, this direction, this direction, this direction, that direction, and the animals will go, what the hell is that? Well, that's kind of different. And they are so curious. So by marking out my territory, I may also be drawing in that which I'm seeking. I want to get inside, verify that I can see it, and uh, go from there. He's white. He's really light colored. He doesn't see me. He's down on all fours. He's moving now. He's headed straight for Bear Creek. There's some vindication right there. That's the biggest mamma jam I got out here. He's just, look at him. He's just eating some berries. Digging on being a bear. Steadily moving. He did not see me. My blind works. That's a nice grizzly. Good size. Beautiful specimen. It's not legal to shoot a bear right now. Bear Creek is right there. Caribou Crossing is right here. He's looking to ambush something. He must have an inkling that caribou are coming in or he wouldn't be down here looking. A lot of mixed emotions about the bears. We may butt heads at some point, but they are majestic, amazing creatures. They don't come in until they know their animals are here. So somewhere around the caribou are coming in, it's, it's a good sign. But now it's time to quit talking, it's time to start hunting. It's not bear season, but it is caribou season. Whatever happens, happens, and I'll adapt to it. Because that's what life is here. Life is about adapting. geese just landed on the uh, split of the island and bottom of the island. It uh, looks like there's probably about 50 to 70 of them there. They're getting ready to head south for the winter. I'm just going to grab my rifle and take a little walk up river. And if I have an opportunity at these geese, I'll take them. I did bring my 22 Magnum because I assume I probably would see some geese or something maybe worthwhile for camp food. shot where there was two or three of them kind of lined up but uh, 
obviously a miss. I didn't see anything flounder. I didn't see anything drop, and I don't see anything on the ground. So I think I'm just going to get back down onto the beach, continue my uh, look for moose. It's a fun, fun little stalk. Unsuccessful at this point, but there might be a round two. Right now, the top of the first inning is uh, Canada geese one, Andy zero. It's up to me what I want to do, what risks I want to take, how I want to live. Now here it's still free. he depends on for almost half his yearly food supply. He's stalking a bull that he spotted not far from camp. But getting close enough to take a shot is a difficult task with such wary prey. Gotta be careful. I gotta stay behind trees and just let him see this hammer. If I want a chance at this moose, I'm gonna have to move further from the lake because he's not coming over here. Seems like no matter how much you get done, you're never ahead of the game. You're always playing catch up. for moose, an animal that will provide him with red meat for the coming winter. But an influx of hunters along the Yukon River has forced him into new territory, and finding a moose before the season closes is a daunting task. This is a whole new area for me to hunt, and so for me this year, um, I'm really hoping I can get a moose, but this is also an opportunity just to learn where to go and where not to go. I've only been here a day. That's nothing for moose hunting. Mean, I've still got to maintain patience, but I, I can't just sit and camp and wait and wait and wait. I, I feel like I have to get out and at least explore a little bit more. 
so I'm gonna go out with my boat right now and just do a nice quiet float down the river and uh, just see what's out there. Bears, moose, just gotta stay optimistic and uh, just wait for that opportunity. It's always amazing to me how you don't hear or see anything and then boom, like a flash, the moose is just standing there. So even when it seems bleak and there's nothing going on, that could change at any second. Good moose of bear country back there. I'd just love to see a black bear walking the beach too. I think I'll do uh, a little bit of scouting in this area right here. This big open slew that goes around this bend on the Yukon. hard not to get disappointed but at the same time I also know through experience one can walk out in like two seconds and just step right out of the brush so even though it's a little demoralizing and a little frustrating I still have to be pretty vigilant just can't believe I'm not seeing anything down that giant slew there alright I think back to camp disappointing that I didn't connect but at the same time it's good to know that the calling's um, getting some attention out there and uh, sometimes this is the hardest part because you know that there's stuff around but you gotta be patient and you gotta stick to your game plan you start changing up your game plan and usually it's not good not gonna give up just change the strategy <laughs> by the ifs and the whats and the maybes, you'd die as a hunter or a fisher person. Let's go check this net, huh? Can't wait to see what's in there. I hope we catch a lot of fish. We brought one top, hopefully we at least get top, maybe two. Maybe. Well, today we're going to go up and go check on that. Um, it's got a lot of high water, so there should be fishing, but uh, one of the things that happens during high water is a lot of debris comes down the river. So, you know, we may have a log in the net. We call them fish sticks. Another thing that could happen is we could have tons of fish. Another thing that could happen we could have no fish. Since we don't know what's happening until we get there, we're on our way to find out. Let's have a look, huh? This dirt really just shifted the net up, because when we put it out, we put it out straight that way, and then... Yeah, so we'll have to reset the net, all right? All the junk and debris is coming down the river. The weight of all that stuff took the net to the side, so straightening the net out is pretty important, too, because it gives us, uh, you know, more more working room to the net than it does it is the way it's sitting right now. So we'll straighten the net out and uh, carry on. Yep, we got a beaver. Oh, is there a beaver? Yep. Okay, chewed through the float line. A nice one inch line. Wow, but shark. We got a beaver. This would be just what we call incidental catch. Sometimes you'll get um, diving birds like um, grebes or loons. They'll get in there. Sometimes the occasional duck, sometimes a muskrat, sometimes a beaver. To tell you the truth, that's probably the first beaver we've ever caught in the net. It's kind of the way the nature works, huh? All this junk comes down the river, gets caught in our net because the high water's bringing in all these salmon from the ocean right over there. And uh, we catch beaver. Oh, he didn't go easy, did he? No. This beaver won't go to waste. We'll just save the skin. 
tan it later, and I'll boil this meat up for the dogs and feed them. Dog gotta eat. You go that way, Carol, I go this way. Well, nets have to be constantly maintained. It's like a trap. You have to keep constantly checking the trap. Well, a net is made to catch things, and you have to constantly keep your fish fresh. You have to keep the crap out of the net, all the junk and debris that's coming down the river, and you, you want to keep up on what your work is. You don't want to get overloaded. Ooh, that looks a lot better. It's clear to the back, isn't it? Ready to start checking? Yeah. Oh, there's a salmon for you. This guy's wrapped up. Oh, there's a couple of them. There's one by you somewhere, Mom. They're gone. Fish? Oh, check it out. The green head. What is that? Oh, ocean fresh, whatever it is. Wow. <laughs> wow, we got a good dinner. Okay. Well, it's nice when we go out and put out our nets, and there's the salmon. They're already here. Look at this one. Oh, this yeah. Is... We'll munch that guy down for dinner, huh? Yeah, this looks like there's dinner to me. There's a whitefish for you, still my, alive. Look at that. My first salmon. Wow, that's a big whitefish. <laughs> glad we started fishing. I'm glad we Our started. Our first days of fishing here this summer turned out pretty good. We've got four good salmon, a whitefish, and a beaver. Well, what can you say? You set a net and you catch things. <laughs> Put your life vest on, bud. We're gonna just go home. We're not gonna cut fish here and. We'll have salmon for dinner, and we'll just throw the other ones in the freezer, huh? Uh-huh. I'll skin that beaver out. It all adds up, and tomorrow will add up, and the next day will add up, and the next day will add up. Yep. You just kind of like the first first go around. And then that's nicely adjusted, so. Yep. What can we do but go home and go have a good salmon dinner, huh? Hee! Anything that can happen will happen. And I'm just going to be prepared for anything. Jesse Holmes and his team of sled dogs survived by harvesting the resources along the region's waterways. This time of year, stockpiling food for the coming winter is crucial. And today, he's headed downriver in search of new areas to catch fish and scout the wildlife. I'm going to head out to one of my favorite spots on the river and do some exploring. Going to be traveling down the Tanana River 35 miles and then cutting north up into the Tolavana River. I call it God's country. It's one of my favorite places in the world. I come out here to fish. I come out here to live off the land. That's what I do. When I'm traveling out in the woods, I eat out of the woods. That's how I get by. Getting down here to have a look and go do some fishing. It ain't just a joy ride for me, but I couldn't think of anything better to be doing with my time right now. something I'm hunting and I didn't stop because I just like to watch the animals as well. You learn something from watching what the animals do. That's what I'm out here doing. You gotta train your eyes to see things quick or otherwise you miss your opportunity. So when I'm out here, I'm looking for animals all the time. I love coming down river. Every mile you get down river, it just gets wilder and wilder. There's a little cooler water coming in here. This might be a spot where I can catch some pike. Right now, I'd be just happy to get something to eat for the night. Pike are a pretty aggressive fish, and they really strike at things, so... They see that flashy lure going through there. If they're out there, they'll hit it. That's 
cast, and then I'm heading up river. See if we can't catch some fish up at the mouth of the next river that comes into here. Time to head on, get a gate on, get up river, and uh, get a little further out. The further we go, the further we get out, and I love that feeling. I'm gonna keep heading on up north and try to make some time before evening comes. That way I can catch some fish and get myself a good camp up. For me, this is just all about exploring and getting more intimate with the country that's around me. I don't want to be restricted to a small area of Ninan where I live. I want to go out and know the country like the back of my hand. Mother Nature will provide. It's just a matter of time, effort, and patience. this morning I'm gonna have to head on back I'm running out of rabbits to pull out of my hat here I've tried calling I've uh, walked sloughs I've tried going upstream of camp downstream of camp it's been pretty bleak out here woke up to a lot of fog on the river this morning and when this fog lifts it's time to get out and look for that moose Frustrating hunt up to this point. Uh, a few fresh signs, but no live animals. Uh, probably floated about 12 miles from camp, right here. Last night I went about four miles upstream from camp, so I've covered. 16, 18 miles in the river. These old bones don't pack the way they used to. <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, I would not even hesitated to go back a quarter mile or half mile off the river. Nowadays, I kind of want to see something at least within a couple hundred yards of the river. not seeing anything. There's a black bear. There's a black bear. good size paw on him it's all about timing the timing was finally good for me and uh, I'll see if I can't this get this guy back to camp and process him there is you never know what you're going to get. You may go out for a moose and end up with a bear. You may go out for a beaver and end up with some ducks. You just don't know what you're going to get. I have a lot of respect for the animals that feed me out here, and if I'm going to take that life, I want it to be taken efficiently and cleanly, 
and with as much respect as I can. There aren't too many places you can just go do this for yourself and by yourself. That's why I live out here. There you go, buddy. Yeah, you're so gentlemanlike. Let's get a bear on the boat. <laughs> see any new ones in the net so I'll move over here and you ladies will cut these fish up and I'll start a fire here pretty quick and we got some coals a much one of them huh some stars soon. Yep, it's starting to get night and evening. Winter is just about here. I'm here. You just have to rely on your intuition and your knowledge. Down there in the 
distance. They're feeding the big bulls aren't feeding this time of year. And they've got no antlers. But this is very good. Because that means there's a bull not far away. There, I hear it. I just heard the bull. So all I have to do now is get close enough to get a shot. There's a big inlet here in the lake, so I have to walk quite a long ways around it. Try to come in from that direction. Act like a bull moose. Challenge that other bull. And hopefully they'll come and try to chase me off. I want us to wound a moose and have him run off. <sighs> I got my moose. First thing I'm gonna do is cut this up into pieces that I can actually move around. It's all about meat preservation. I want to put as much meat on the table as I can out of this moose. It's another fall, and that's what I do every fall. I go out and I hunt moose. It's the biggest thing for me in the whole year. In terms of getting food, there's nothing like getting a moose, because when I pull that trigger, that's six months food right there. I got things under control here. I got the guts out. This meat's not gonna spoil now. I gotta get my canoe, get my sled, come back over here and move this moose home. If I didn't have the sled, I'd have to carry all that weight on my back. What an awesome hunt. I walked 13 or 14 miles looking for this moose, connected with it right here. And now, all I gotta do is get it home. The more effort it takes to get that meat, the better it tastes when I eat it. It's getting really late, it's getting really dark. I gotta bring one more load in the sled, and then my first canoe load will be all ready. This will be my last load tonight. Come back over tomorrow for the rest of the meet. Time to head back to the canoe. Even though I've had a lot of success moose hunting, you never know. It's hunting. It's not guaranteed. There's always the chance that you'll come home empty-handed. So when I get a moose, it always feels good. Benefits me mentally, physically, and economically. Go into a grocery store and you buy a little bucket of vegetables and it's 30 bucks. I can come out here and pick this for free. It's time to pick tomatoes and peppers. Get a bunch of my, uh, my vegetables picked and dehydrated and blanched and frozen. The greenhouse. 
cows produced really well this year. Now it's time to reap the harvest. After harvesting a bear along the Yukon River, Andy has returned home to gather vegetables from his garden. With winter approaching, the crop must be preserved along with the bear meat to last through the freeze. I still have a lot of tomatoes growing up, up high here, and I want to get them dehydrated. It's starting to get a little bit colder, and I really start thinking about doing some of my final harvest on some of these. It's always really hard for me to give up the gardening at the end of the year, you know, when it gets to this point. I know it's only a couple of weeks or a week away from things freezing or the vegetables being fully mature. It's really the only really fresh stuff that I get to eat all year. There's nothing like fresh tomato. <laughs> nothing like it. Fresh tomatoes, fresh green beans, fresh peas. And it's like a jungle in here. It's really fun for me to come in and see all the fruit growing. I put a lot of time and effort into the garden this year. Probably more than I've done in a while. And it's paying off. But it's, it's a pretty big time consumer to, to grow a garden in a greenhouse this prolific. It takes a lot of time, a lot of perseverance. I always like putting up food for multiple years. You never know what might happen in this world. and So it's smart to dehydrate and blanch and freeze and can and pickle. Because it's all food that you can eat for years to come. Ooh, that's a nice one there. Look at that. I feel really lucky to live in a place where I can grow food like this. There are a lot of places in Alaska you just really can't garden, garden like you can right here. It's just a really enjoyable thing for me. Like my life here, what's going on in this greenhouse is 100% dependent upon the sun. When the sun's out, it's warm, the plants are growing. When the sun starts to fade, the days get shorter. They start winding down. I have to crank it up, and then I'm winding down for some of my winter month activities. You know, gardening is one of those things in life, if, if it's your passion, it's not really work. When I come in here, it's very ther therapeutic for me. It's almost um, meditative to come into my greenhouse, pick, pick plants, pick weeds, water, fertilize, and just see how the plants are doing. I'm a firm believer that the more time you spend with your plants, the more they produce for you. I think they feed off of your energy, and obviously they love your carbon dioxide. <laughs> yeah, you definitely won't find this in uh, the local markets. Look at that, baby. That's a cabbage. And I'm guessing that's probably a 12-pound cabbage right there, maybe more. For me, this is a... Pretty nice big cabbage. <laughs> I love it. Nothing like hard work and good food. I'm the protector of the tundra, not the ruiner of the tundra. I think I still have a really good shot at waiting to get something. Not a guarantee to shoot something, just a guarantee to stay hidden and see if it shows up. So I'm gonna go inside. Sue is hunting for caribou, a key food source to help her survive the winter ahead. To keep her hidden from the animals, Sue has built a blind using harvested materials. But caribou migrate quickly, and she must be prepared for the moment they cross her path. I'm gonna have to have my eyes open. My camp doesn't move, but the caribou migrate. If they go five miles that direction, I'll never see it, never know it, and I'm done. So it's a fine line between waiting for the next one, not because I have a big rack, I'm looking for a better booty. I need the meat. But if I wait too long or pass up too much, no meat. Can't eat good intentions. I just got out of spending some time in the blind. Um, did not see any caribou close. The new me is going to be patient and I'm going to learn patience. Did this work? Absolutely. A bear stood up, didn't see me, went out that way doing his bear thing. 
but it's getting later at night. I have a bear in between me and home. So buyer beware. Get myself home before I lose the advantage. It's time to go home. There's a dynamic element to being here. And maybe it takes a dynamic person to want to be here. During the summer in Alaska, you are 24 hours a day on the clock. The camp was mighty run down when I got here. This is now going into my 16th year here. I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm changing, I'm fluid, and I'm happy. I'm working faster, harder, smarter. That's what I like about it here. It's always a challenge. It's always a big learning curve. I don't know what comes next, but I'm going to go into it, balls to the walls, flames in my hair, and full speed ahead. May not be a perfect plan, but it's my plan. I'm this animal, too. I got to eat to get by, and I want to be part of the system, not observing it always. I like watching the animals, but I also like eating them. We just hit the Talavana River. This is where I was headed. Now I'm going to head up the river and look for myself a fishing spot and camp spot. I got my eyes wide open for opportunity right now. Jesse is searching the Tolubana River for new fishing grounds in hopes of securing protein to survive the coming winter. With temperatures already dropping, this is his last chance to stockpile food along the river before the freeze overtakes the waterways. Wow, that's a huge eagle. There's all kinds of stuff going on out here. He's going up into that tree. How cool is that? Always awesome to see any kind of wildlife. Good omen to see those eagles. Oh, it's so beautiful out here. That's why I travel so far to get here. Once you're out here, it's like heaven. Here's where the river comes in, and I'm gonna stop here and fish and see if I can't catch myself something for dinner. Oh, they're jumping. Yep, this is a good spot. Sure, I'd like to catch pike after pike after pike, but really all I need is one pike. One pike makes me breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I got one, all right. This bike. It's a good sign. It might be a good size one. Oh, that's a great fish. Make sure he doesn't get away. He ain't yours till he's in the net. right there. Yeah, the bias, we got a nice fish for dinner. I don't want to get bit by these guys. They got monstrous teeth. Sorry, there, little fella. You're going to make a fine, fine meal. Nice one. Well, it's hard to stop fishing, but it's getting dark out, and I got my fish. No use being greedy. Anyways, I got my meal for the night. When I'm traveling out in the woods, I eat out of the woods. Got a nice fish there to eat. Life is good. Looks like I got a good spot to camp here. A little opening in here. And it's like a great spot to set up. Yep, this place has all the elements of a good camp to me. Nice game trail going through it.
horses are out. And so far, I've seen a lot of animals. I'm convinced with that moose device. The way to be a successful moose hunter is knowing the country you're going into and knowing the animal. Anytime I'm watching the animal and watching how it's acting, what it's doing, the places it's traveling, that gives me an advantage when I come out here hunting. It's a really promising sign. I'm gonna leave this guy to his business and not disturb him any. Nice. Good boy. Good job today. Yeah. It was a great day. I headed out from Aunt Anna. Went to the pike fishing hole and got a pike. That's what I'm gonna cook up for dinner. And saw lots of animals and wildlife and good country along the way. It was a great day for me. This is a good season for me so far. I feel like I'm well prepared for everything. The way I'm getting to get out here and enjoy my life more. I just like going out and living off the land and being nature's friend. So, I mean, it feels really good to me to do these things. It's what I like doing. That's why I moved to Alaska, because I could spend the rest of my life exploring out here. I'm very excited for the upcoming winter. I know that I'm going to be able to spend more time out on the trail training with the dogs. And, goals to win the Iditarod, so I'm going to have to be out there putting everything on the line. I just keep setting my goals higher. Constant improvement, constant growth, constant challenging myself, pushing myself to be better. Good clean food. Living the dream. Just a rifle and a knife and a few other tools. Walk around the lake. It doesn't get any better than that. Get back over to the kill site. I got a lot more meat over there to get. Move the rest of the meat down to the shoreline today. And then canoe it back to camp. Yesterday morning, I finally connected with a big bull. But he was a long ways away. About a two-mile walk from my camp. Way over on the other side of the lake. I shot him right around sunrise. I butchered him yesterday, cut him all up in pieces I could move. But last night, I couldn't get all the meat back. It got really late and dark. I had to stop and get some rest. Now I'm headed back over. I gotta get the rest of the meat. Whenever I'm going back to a kill site, the main thing I'm thinking about is bears. If there's a bear around, I wanna be very careful. When you're hunting alone, you can't stay with the meat all the time. I have to transport it a long distance. And while I'm transporting meat, the rest of the meat's sitting there by itself. There's nothing I can do about that. There's the meat. I can see it. it looks good. I don't see any signs that anything's been here. Everything looks just like I left it last night. No problems. That's what I was hoping for. Maybe seven loads of meat left to move down to the lake. It's a long walk. I got to get started on it. By leaving the hide right on the meat like this, it protects the meat. It keeps it a lot cleaner. If I had skinned this moose and all the meat was exposed, when I'm moving it around, little twigs, dirt, grass, and stuff get on it, and I got to pick all that off or trim off the crust, this way it really protects the meat. Only got a couple more loads to drag over to the canoe. One more load accomplished. All right, time for the final load. The only thing I'm leaving here is this pile of guts, a scrap of hide. Scavengers will come along and clean all that up. Nothing goes to waste. The ground right here is going to be licked clean. A grizzly bear, pack of wolves, wolverine, something will come and get it. They always do. All right, I got to move this head. There's fat behind the eyes. There's a nice brain in there to eat. This is coming with me. I have 
to see if I can get up with this thing. This is a heavy moose head. There, I got it. That's good. I want this head. I'm gonna get this head over to the canoe and paddle it on home. I walked 13 or 14 miles over three days looking for this moose. Connected with it right here. And now, all I gotta do is get it home. There. Made it back to camp. What a great spring and summer it's been up here in the Brooks Range. It's just been a great journey these last days walking through these mountains completely free. Just to get out and travel a path you've never traveled before. Maybe make a path no one's ever traveled before. I feel alive out here. I've got the time and I've got the country. The possibilities are limitless. All oh, the meat back in camp. My whole moose. Woo! That was a lot of work. What an awesome hunt. I'm gonna sleep good tonight. Everybody has a personal journey. I think the real trick in life is discovering what that personal journey is and then going for it. successfully harvested a black bear along the Yukon River to ensure that he and his sled dogs have enough protein for the winter ahead. Processing the animal to keep the meat preserved is critical. Oh, this is gonna be some good sausage. The death of a bear means a good quality life to me. All the things that I harvest out here become really important food to me and a good quality of life. And that's why I live out here. You can smell, but you can't steal. You want a little piece? Oh, you guys know so well what to do, and you have to be very patient when you do this. Nice and easy, easy, easy. Oh, that was good. After I get all this done, I've gotta still continue to hunt as much as I can. I always consider bear and moose my two uh, sustainable resources, reliable resources. The vast majority of the time when you're hunting, you don't come home with anything. I feel lucky that I got this bear. It just goes to show you, you gotta keep your spirits up, keep plugging away even when it seems that there's nothing out there, and the payoff comes. Every time I come down to the banks of the Yukon River and fix myself a meal, I would feel really thankful that I was able to at a fairly young age, make a decision that this is what I wanted to do and to stick with it. I've learned how to feed myself here. I've learned how to build the shelters I need to live here. I've developed a life here that's sustainable. And uh, I've learned how to do that and live comfortable at the same time. I think a person should measure their quality of life, not by how much money they have or how many possessions they have, they should measure the quality of their life by how much time they have to do the things that they love to do. I feel like I'm a rich man living out here. Chào các bạn nha. Đây là cây cổ thụ trong vườn nhà mình. Cây này là cây Để Rất là to các bạn ạ Cây lục vừng các bạn ạ Tán rất là to Đấy. Ông trồng trong cái bãi nước Cây này rất là lâu rồi các bạn ạ Rất nhiều người hỏi mua nhưng không bán 
Đây là gốc của nó đấy ạ Rất là nhiều thân Bao nhiêu người phải mua nhưng ông không bán ạ Đây là cùng các bạn nhé Đến mùa nó ra hoa Nó ra bốn cái con nhìn rất là đẹp Rất là nhiều thân Nâu đời nó người các bạn Thank mm -hmm. you.